What we're driving down to is we believe, we have a compelling offer out there, extremely compelling. We're, we have gone out to shareholders, a lot of Qualcomm significant shareholders. Support has been very positive, overwhelming in fact. And what they like to see is their board engage with us. Any responsible board would make it a top priority to negotiate a merger agreement with us and preserve protect that $82 a share that we have on the table. Well, any responsible board, that means you believe this board is irresponsible in the way it's handling itself. No, we, we are very encouraged by our um, uh, proposed meeting this Wednesday. Um, you say overwhelming support from their shareholder base. I mean, I'm trying as, I, as a reporter to talk to some of those same shareholders. Very much unclear where the index funds, by the way, which owns so much of Qualcomm, as is always the case with these large companies, are coming down. What I'm hearing, though, is a continued concern on antitrust, a hope that there will still be more value there. Let's start with antitrust. Why not give those shareholders that I'm speaking to who are not saying they have overwhelming support for this even more assurances, not just an $8 billion breakup fee, but say, you know what, come hell or high water, we will get this deal done, because that's what some of them tell me they would want. Why didn't you offer that? We, what we have in place today is a very serious offer. It is. And let, let me start off by uh, putting a perspective. The other side, Qualcomm, has been message, lots of messaging from them these past two, three months. And lots on rat, heavy on rhetoric, very short on specifics. We studied everything. We have studied everything. Here are the facts. Okay, the two businesses, the two companies, are highly complementary. Our core businesses with each other do not compete. There's a clear path to regulatory approval. And we have the track record. We have but done over $50 that, Hawk, billion. If, dollars. if you believe that there is a clear path, then why not take on that regulatory risk in a more significant way? What? Not that an $8 billion reverse break fee is not significant, but why not just take it all on? Well, we are already taking most of the risk in certainty on regulator. We are. We have, as I said, step up where we have identified, as they have, the two product lines that overlap, not major, not core, but two product lines. And we have upfront very clearly indicated to all three regulators, we will divest this up immediately. The rest of the staff will sign up best efforts to clear what is fairly routine. That's why I mentioned uh, we, it is a low regulatory risk. And on top of that, we're stepping up, putting where our money where the mouth is, $8 billion. You know I'm kind of frugal guy. You think I would sign up to pay $8 billion if there's even a second thought it would happen? Well, I think it's great that you brought up the frugality because there's a front page article in the business day of the New York Times today. San Diego sees losing Qualcomm as woeful. And in that, they talk about Qualcomm uh, supporting robotics classes for school children, subsidizing museum memberships for young adults, raises money for local police. People there are, according to the Times, so accustomed to everything that comes with being Qualcomm home, having a hard time imagining a city without that distinction. Shouldn't they start imagining it? Uh, let me, uh, let me, the, the real, only real question i like to add here that comes up here is simply this. To paraphrase a famous president, are Qualcomm shareholders better off today than they were four years ago? Answer, no, they're 11% poorer. Ask the same of Broadcom shareholders. They are 500% richer. We are very good at creating, building sustainable businesses and employment and innovation on businesses we acquire. All right, but Hawk, one of the reasons why I've been a big backer of everything you've done, but I am concerned here, is that when the rumor was first reported that you were interested in buying Qualcomm, your stock was at $273. Your stock has plummeted. And particularly when you raise the bid a second to 82, your stock got hit again. We're talking about a 50-point swing down as you attempt in what may be a quixotic attempt to buy Qualcomm. At what point do you feel that your shareholders are getting hurt by this? 
We believe, I believe, we have a lot of support from our shareholders, uh, Broadcom shareholders for simply this reason. We have a track record of creating value through acquisition, building sustainable business. We have a track record of, in the long term, creating this kind of lot of value for both Broadcom and Qualcomm shareholders. That's, a, that's really what we believe in. You're meeting with them on Wednesday, I believe, right? You, yes. You go, both go before ISS, which is important in these kinds of situations, the shareholder services that makes its recommendation to index funds and yes. the like, and then what, meet Wednesday. So you go in there, you say 82, best and final, and they say, you know what, 90 bucks will get it done, Hawk. Do you go higher? This is best and final. We have a compelling offer. And and we we would we would encourage we would urge the board to take a hard look at the value we are creating here for shareholders. Think about it: sixty dollars is fifty percent premium from before we came out with our offer. Sixty dollars per share is cash in this volatile market. We give certainty. We believe our offer is very compelling, and I believe any responsible board but should take it seriously they and engage. It, so Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.